Hello, my name is Guan Yu. Those of you on Homecoming Everlasting may know me as Mr. Technoid. I'm making this video because ever since I said that I use a controller, I've been getting a lot of a lot of people ask me how do I set it up. So I just want to make this video to help anyone who wants to set up using their gamepad controller or whatever with City of Heroes. So without further ado, let me just get right into it. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. I've done with the this with a PS2 controller. You can use any controller, but there's an extra step you're going to have to take if you're using a PlayStation or Sony based controller. But if you're using any other game controller, it should be just ready to plug and play. Uh, let me hop into it. So first thing you have to do is go in game. And. Oh, wow, the server is pretty laggy right now. Give me a second. <sighs> yeah, everyone's getting on. But the first thing you have to do is you have to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of things in game. You have to go to options, and you have to go to control and disable joystick input because this game's native controller support is terrible. Just don't 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 use it at all. <laughs> like the game actually does have controller support, but it's god awful. Especially the joysticks, just just a no go. So that will be enabled. You want to dis you want to click to disable it enabled it my bad okay all right second thing you're gonna have to do is go to well you don't have to do this but I strongly strongly recommend doing this because otherwise I don't see playing the game without these settings so as you notice my UI and my cursor are slightly bigger than normal so what you want to do is you want to change your window scale to around 150 percent or more possibly to make things easier to work with the joystick and also you want to scale your cursor up to around 160 to 170 percent um you don't have to do this but i find that trying to click things because the joystick i mean to a computer mouse everyone knows a joystick not going to be as good for aiming and whatnot so this just makes things at least two times easier so um that's really all you have to do i'm trying to remember if there's anything else yeah that's about it just make your window slightly bigger um, make your cursor slightly bigger and disable joystick and then that's all you have to do in City of Heroes oh yeah also uh, I'll get into that later with the powers okay so the next thing you want to do is I'll put a link to it in the description as you can see I was watching some Judge Judy because Judge Judy is the goat but uh, next thing you want to do is go to this website, I'll link it in the description, GitHub Anti-Micro. Anti-Micro is a program that allows you to use any gamepad. It's a free program, unlike uh, Pinnacle. You could use you could use um, Pinnacle, whatever they're calling Xpad or now, but I use Anti-Micro. But they work about the same. It allows you to basically map your controller to work as a, as a keyboard and mouse. And the great thing about this, this isn't just for gaming. You could be for anything. So you could turn your controller into a makeshift keyboard and mouse for any other games as well. So what I'm telling you now can be used in future games or whatnot. But you want to, um, once you're on this page, you want to download the uh, release 2.23 or whatever the latest release is. And you're going to see news, news portable, all that stuff, source code. You want to just download the first one, Windows 32. There you go. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you're using 64-bit or 32-bit, really. So because it's, I believe they just always release in 32-bit. And 64-bit can run 32-bit. That's a whole other thing. Okay. Once you've gotten that downloaded and installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is set it all up. So you're going to turn on your controller, which mine is already turned on. And I have two anti-micros here. One is an older version. Don't worry about that. But okay, now you open up my anti-micro. Should have made a shortcut already. If it didn't make a shortcut, then you might have to go to file location and whatnot. Oh, I forgot the most important step. Always run this as administrator. God damn it, I just granted it. Admin full, whatever the fuck. Okay, run this, run this administrator. Okay. Now that it's running as administrator, uh, the next thing you want to do is set it up. As you can see, I already have a profile set up. That's the beautiful thing about this. Once you do it the first time, you'll never have to do it again because it'll be saved. But because I'm teaching you how to do this, we're just going to make a new one. So click that up there to make a new one. So the first thing we want to do is set up basic movement, obviously, because you want to be able to move around. So this is for the left joystick. So that's going to be D. This is going to be A. This is going to be S. This is going to be W. That's basic movement done. 
Next, for the mouse, you want to actually click the stick it button in the middle and you want to put this to presets, mouse normal. Now, I actually have a, some, I actually go into, before I do, let me explain Dead Zone, fuck, getting all over the place. Dead Zone controls how, um, it's not, it's not exactly your sensitivity, it's, how I explain it? When you're moving your joystick around, oops. Oh, one. Shit. I fucked it up. Give me a second. Bring it back to mouse normal. All right, when you're moving your joystick around, the dead zone determines if you have to make wide movements to the joystick. All right, it's, it's unimportant. Just leave, keep dead zone where it is, or if you want your if you want your analog stick to be slightly more sensitivity uh, sensitive, then you can bring it up a little bit. But the next thing you need to do is alter your sensitivity because it's going to have pretty low sensitivity. So I have mine right here set to 50 for both. And it goes from 50 to uh, to about 1,000 DPS. Uh, I mean, DPS, PPS, uh, which is pixels per second. But basically, you'll never have to go above, I'd say, 70. So just set that to 50. Set both of those to 50 once you're done. Now you have a functioning mouse. Congratulations. As um as your right analog stick. So now the next thing you need to do is use the right trigger and left triggers. And what you want to do with these is for the right trigger, I make it the right mouse button. For the left trigger, I make it the left mouse button. And in game, I, um here we go, in game. I don't use the turning button, I don't use the Q and E button, so that's not important to me. So in game, I'm now able to move around and turn. So we've got that figured out. We've got basic movement figured out now. We, now we also have to have jump. So here's where things can get a little tricky. Or not a little tricky, here's an option. If you're using a fly ability, then you wanna have it, you don't need to have it set to toggle, but if you're using super jump, then you have to have it set to toggle. Because it's annoying otherwise. You have to constantly hold out. Because I like to use the A button. So, I mean the space button. So, let's press the A button. There we go. I usually use the A button for jumping. So, set that to space. And also, click it again and put toggle. So, that way, if you have the super jump ability, like I do, for most of my characters. As you can see, I'm no longer holding the A button. And it's still jumping. And now if I let go of the A button, there we go. So there we go. So just put it to toggle if you're using super jump or combat jump. Who, who the fuck uses combat jump? If you're using super jump, set it to toggle. If you're just using fly, then set it or super speed or tele whatever the hell. You get the idea. You don't need to toggle it. So the next thing you're going to want to do is the shoulder buttons. So... Left shoulder, I like to have as zoom in, uh, I mean zoom out. So it's gonna be the scroll wheel down. Oops, wrong thing. And then the right shoulder is gonna be the scroll wheel up. So now we're able to zoom in and out using the shoulder buttons, the little um, shoulder ones right before the triggers. So there you go. So that helps us even further with movement. Okay, so now we have movement figured out. So the next thing, and don't worry, I'm gonna get to ability soon enough. Don't you, don't you worry. The next thing we need to do is have the back button set as M for the map because I'm always looking at the map. <laughs> I'm always lost, so we set that to M. And here's where things are gonna. Here's where we're finally getting to the abilities, because I know you guys been waiting. How do we use abilities? So, for me, I'm a mastermind class, so what I want to do is, I use two sets, and I get into sets in a moment. These, as you can see, these things, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's how you set that up. So you have the, so with the start key on your controller, with the start button on your controller, all you have to do is click on that, click advanced. All right, click set selector and click select set to two way. There you go. What that means is now when you press the start button, boom, it brings up a whole new, uh, a whole new profile 
even while you're in game. So while you're in game, you press the start button, you're back to the original profile. You press it again, you're back to, the, you're now on this profile, which I have no buttons mapped for. So now you see, um, and since you have both a back button and a start button, you could theoretically have up to three sets in this game. So you have a new set for each ability type. So I get how I use them personally, but now, now you know uh, how you use all your abilities with a controller. That, that's how it's done with the sets. But going back to set one, I'll show you how I set up my abilities personally. So my main abilities are Force Bolt, my one, two, three, and four, basically. One, two, three, four, and I guess five is why I rarely use Photon Grenade. But one, two, three, four, and five, those are my five main abilities. So I want these on my main set. So for that, for my, let's see. For my Force Bolt, I like to set it to X, one, one key. For my uh, secondary ability, I like to set that to Y, and then third, set it to B. There we go. And then for my, I also like to use the uh, right stick click. For my Taser Darts, which is four. There we go. And that should cover the first set. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else that I use. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the other ones so I can see. But I think that's everything on this one for these abilities. Yeah, that, that about covers that. Those are my five main abilities. Okay. And so now in set two, first thing we're going to do is actually, well, a uh, shortcut to that is we could do this. Go to presets, WASD keys, finish. Go here to preset, set that to mouse normal, finish. Go to A button, oops, go to A button, space. Make sure it's toggle. I'm just doing this again, real quick. Okay, and so now with this, what you're gonna wanna do is now you, for my robots, for summoning my robots and also for using my uh, force field abilities and everything else you see on this secondary slot. And this is just how I do it. You could do it differently, but this is how I do it. Oh yeah, you also wanna program the triggers as well. So oops, right, the right, right mouse button, left is, left mouse button. And the back key is the map. And so now for robots, I think X feels like it would be my battle drones, which is the eight key. B would be my assault drones, which is zero. And W would be my protector drones, which is nine. And then I have my equip robots, which would be the right, right stick click for equip robots. For me, per these are just my personal settings, by the way, remember, so you can set this up differently, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Okay. And then for the right and then for the uh, left shoulder. I have that as a six key for my dispersion bubble. I mean, for the left shoulder, God, and then for the right shoulder. For the right shoulder, I forget what I put that <laughs> I'm forgetting as I'm doing this. I forget what I put at the right shoulder. Oh, pho uh, Photon Grenade. Oh wait, no, I already have Photon Grenade in the first set. Crap, wait. Or do I? No, no, I do. Oh, I made it the left click, I forgot. Left click is Photon Grenade on the first set. So five. Now you're under, you kind of get how this goes. So we have that, that, and that. And then, oh yeah, okay. So now you might be asking, okay, I have my main ability set up, but what about this uh, secondary bar? Well, if you notice in the game, when you press control plus whatever number, then you get to use your secondary power set bar. So that's simple. All you have to do is go on here for my secondary stuff. Oh, I remember now. I actually made the back key the follow key because robots are fucking annoying. And they keep trying to punch things for some reason. So I have to, every couple seconds in a battle, keep spam that follow key. So I make this, I go to advanced. And now you can see you can have multiple buttons. So control, and what is it? It's control seven. Control seven. There you go. 
then that will make sure my robots can be following me. And then you also have to have to heal as well. Uh, for heal, where did I put it? For healing my robots, I'm trying to remember exactly what I programmed that to. Oh yeah, it's the right shoulder. For healing, because robots always need to be healed. Don't play mastermind class. So control five for healing them. There you go. And then for these, these are actually, I make these my force field abilities. So this could be control. Well, you get the idea from here. So I think I can end the tutorial here. You get the idea. And how, if you wanna, you can make up to, up, you can have up to three sets if you use the back key as well. So that's pretty much how you set up your controller to work with City of Heroes. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll help you out. And uh, if you have, oh, last side bit to get this out of the way. If you want to use a PlayStation controller, then you're going to need to get, because Windows doesn't have a driver for Sony controller, so you're going to have to actually get a third party driver program. Uh, I forget what it's called. I'm going to link it in the description below for PlayStation controller users. You have to install that one first, uh, and then you're good to go. So I think that should cover this tutorial. Like I said, if you have any questions on anything, you have any problems, just message me and just put it in the, in the comments. There you go, and I'll get to it. In, I'll get to it pretty fast, at least within 48 hours. <laughs> so, uh, 